was loaded and intentional walk to Barry Bonds. Two and two with the bases loaded and one out. Oh my Central God! Deep to right field, way up there and way out of here. Second deck walk off home run. Grand slam. Hi everyone. Welcome back to our second episode ever of MLB Playing Time. Um, your host, JP, at Dap Scout on Twitter. And the actual man, the person, all my job is is just to you know keep him talking, Mike Curlin. Mike, how's it going? Not much in terms of a, a job. I think I keep myself talking without you in the room. So uh, you keep me guided, which is huge. And very, I'm very <laughs> thankful for that. Well, thank you so much for everybody out there for, um, you know, tuning in last week. You know, we, we were really kind of blown away by the feedback um, and all the all the views as well. And before we get any further, please uh, come on down and, and visit MLBPlayingTime.com so you can see all the tools. Mike's constantly updating the site, not just with projections, not just with articles, but he's also updating it with the player time dashboard, which you'll see a bunch throughout the show as well. So uh, without further ado, Mike, um, let's get into some of the questions I got for you because absolutely nothing happened this past week. Nothing at all. Nope. There was no injuries. Nothing sad happened. So, um, you know, I just want to start off before we get into all the kind of the sad stuff. What's your biggest surprise of this week? Oh, it, it's it's Tuesday or is it is Tuesday still, right? Right. <laughs> if you, like, oh. It's it's awful. It's just the biggest surprise is that it's not stopping, right? Like, <laughs> like it feels like just a dream that it's like one of those like nightmares. You wake up, you go go wash your face or something, go to the bathroom, you go back to bed, and you get right back into that nightmare. Like you don't actually escape it. Right. It's one of those where it's just like like today. What Nick Pavetta went down. This yep. is at Framberg yesterday. Um, un- unannounced Strider, obviously, a couple days ago, and it's one of those things where it's just like constant. Like, what is going on right now? Oh. Uh, and, and, now we, you, like, oh. and on top of that, you see like Twitter burned down because everybody's fighting each other, trying to figure out why it's happening. I mean, it shouldn't even be a bad, like, first off, Twitter investigates, you know, it's one of the funniest things in the world to watch. But, you know, at the same time, it doesn't really matter. It's happening. It's no more just a, you know, hey, last year sucked. And the year before that sucked a little less. But this is just almost Armageddon. I, I, I've never seen this level of just talent get wasted in the first couple of weeks. No, normally it's like, and like the initial, you know, Bradish went down. Um, Yuri popped up with an elbow late. Right. Those were kind of like, okay, there's always a few, yeah, exactly. like bomb, bomb explosion type of injuries just before the season starts or right as the season ramps up. Right. But to see it like, hey, we're the first, you know, we're week three or week two and a half, whatever you want to call it. And oh, by the way, now these pitchers, now that these pitchers that were, maybe they were ramping up and not quite to the extent they are now. Now they're ramping up and elbows are falling off. There's like no more UCLs in the league. I'm so like almost like if you look, the guys that aren't injured right now are guys that have all had Tommy John already, right? And some right. of these guys have had multiple Tommy Johns at this point. Yeah. And uh, it makes you wonder because I know once you have your second one, like you're you're even more prone to having like to re-injuring that ligament again or something like that. It's, it's weird. So um yeah, it's it's interesting and it's frustrating and navigating through that is very very difficult because it's easier on the offensive side of things to kind of get an idea of where the playing time is going to come from and what type of skills and it's i think it's a little easier to even stream hitters off the waiver wire to frankenstein the stats of a hitter you might lose but pitching you you can't just like if you're if you're for reference some of the guys this week like deeper leagues for reference for instance um martin martin perez martin why does it sound wrong he pitched today yeah is that the right name yeah martin perez for the pirates yeah, is that for some reason that sounded wrong? But yes, okay, it was Martin Perez, obviously. Yeah, so <laughs> Perez, um, yesterday right. with um, yesterday he was great with, for the Rangers. I mean, you know, he was. I mean, he's he's pitching way better than his peripherals, but he was he great. Does. He does when, when when Perez pitches well or pitches above his peripheral peripherals. He it's like he does that. It's like he does when he pitches well. It's usually above what he, everything suggests he should do, right? Sure. But um, you have him. You have Trevor Trevor Williams. I'm I'm for someone who does this so much. You would think the name Trevor <laughs> Williams of the uh, of the Nationals. You right. had um, other. I'm trying to think. Other. My point is, is these are just these guys, right? These useless guys that we, at least we, people we view useless. Otherwise, these guys went out and both pitched gems, and those types of guys. Okay, cool. So now you might be able to get ratios from them, right? But you're not right. getting strikeouts. So now you're like, and those teams, the Pirates, although they are fun, they're running hot right now. 
they will win some games, but like the Nationals aren't going to win many games. So it's like even the players that are available, what Paul Blackburn, another guy that's kind of just a guy who's going to get you, who can get you some decent ratios, the win potential is not there. So you're getting two out of five stats if you're playing Roto, right? Or if right. you're playing head to head, those wins, you're not getting those wins on these teams. So it's, it's frustrating because you're with pitching, the deeper the format is, the less you're able to make up for a strike. There is no making up for a strider, right. but the less you can make up for even a, a Pavetta. Pavetta is probably your third guy on a deeper league, fourth or fifth in a shallower format. It's a, in a shallower format, it's easier to make that up. But in a, in a in a in a deeper format, it's still the same names that are available. You're lucky if you get your hands on Graham Ashcraft, who looked good up until he didn't yesterday. And so it's one of those things where yep. you, I, I'm over here complaining and crying about my ratios in some leagues, but at least I have some live arms left in some of these leagues. You know, I've seen yep. some guys on Twitter, and you mentioned Twitter being kind of like the kind of our little hub to to sure. kind of see what people are saying. And some of the people are just not having. So it's like one of those things where it's like. You know what? It could be worse. Oh, it could be way worse. I, yeah, you're right. Some of these people that drafted back in January. I mean, just I have or, or December, just don't wasteland. You sh- don't you dare besmirch those teams. Like I have a number of them. I started I started drafting back in October or November. Uh, <laughs> I've okay. got issues. <laughs> it's okay. So going to that end, right? I, I know we can't necessarily, uh, you know, pick them, but let, can you help us find? Or at least help us figure out how we could look for pitching replacements. I mean, we can always look for the top prospect in AAA, but do you look for like the the long reliever for that next kind of pitching replacement? Or is there any kind of, you know, magic uh, ball there that, you know, higher chance if you go with that, you know, long, long reliever in the bullpen or, you know, kind of mix and match there? So, yeah, it really does depend. Um, If I'm like, hey, I just need to get some ratio help, maybe some guys I can sneak away in, like a Shelby Miller would, would be perfect. Chris Martin, high leverage guys, guys, high leverage guys that give you more than a K per inning or at least a K per inning mm-hmm. and will not dent your ratios all that often. So guys that, that can and if and if all goes well, maybe they fall into a closer role. So at least you get something out of it. But I have no problem trying to replace some of the stats with that. Like if, if I could in an ideal world, maybe you take a guy that's going to give you volume. Like we mentioned, Trevor Williams, Blackburn, these guys. Again, I'm right. more so the. Unfortunately, my experience is really much, a lot more extensive in deeper formats. So that's where my my head goes to these names that no one else cares about. But um, even Colin Ray types, like who? No one cares, right? But uh, right. here we are talking about these guys that are rather useless in shallower formats. But uh, yeah, th- so you, you maybe take one of those guys and you pair them with this high, like this multi inning reliever or this high leverage reliever that can give you some meaningful innings, sneak a win in there. So you can kind of get the innings and volume and potential for wins off, off one guy with decent ratios. And then you turn around and get the strikeouts and sneak a win. Like Shelby Miller got another win today. I think he has three wins on the season already for reference. Yep. And so I mean, he's, I, I, uh, did what I didn't think, expect myself to do. I picked him up last week. I mean, I just, it was just one of those things where, it's starting to look a little bit tasty considering again <laughs> the rest of the landscape is just ugly. <laughs> but if you but if you want to take chances, you have guys like uh Spencer Aaron Getty, I believe is how you say his name. Yep. He's getting the call now because Fernando Valdez is down, which Valdez, another big name, right. sometimes SP one for some teams. If you waited, if you went with like no SP attack and waited on a pitcher, he could have been your first guy like in the fourth round or something. Mm-hmm. Even in deeper formats, he was going around there. So um, that's a big one. So it's like guys like Ben Brown, obviously, if you could project, like if you think Kate Horton will get a call up, you take a shot there. So yeah, top prospects getting ahead of the market there. However, if you play an FBC like me, if, they, if those guys aren't drafted, they're not available in the player pool until they debut. So it's a little harder to get ahead. However, majority of players don't play an FBC. You can take advantage of that. And like maybe even the Phillies, they don't really need help. Oh, Tom Walker's about to start a rehab assignment. So maybe get ahead of that if you want to try to stash an injury play, injured player. Okay. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. Like right now, you can probably get Tyone in a lot of leagues, even some deeper formats. I know he'll be available, not a lot of them, but he's not great, but he's usable, right? And he's pitching for a decent team in the Cubs. Yep. So sure. Tyone's a guy that coming back from injury, Braxton Garrett, although he's probably universally drafted in deeper formats, a guy that is already rehabbing, probably one start away, maybe, maybe two. Same with Tyone, they're on the same schedule. Like they're both one to two starts, rehab starts away from returning. So one to two weeks. Okay. Uh, but other than that, yeah. Um, but if you're in shallower formats, guys like Jordan Hicks, who are probably not available, but maybe you go for upside like that. Guys where it's like just back into rotation types with like Keaton Wynn, another name I like, even in shallower formats, just because he shows glimpses and now with Cobb out, he has kind of a runway to to innings, and he has he has strikeout upside. He can be a little he can get blown up here and there, but he's a name that even in shallow formats I like, and I even because I play some twelves, and he's been out there, and he's a guy that I've eyed because of that upside. Yeah, I uh, I'm a little surprised with some of the names that are kind of still I wouldn't say under owned, but like 
Louis Varland, right, um, is one of those guys that I, I know he has a six plus ERA, but it's tough. The, yeah, but that I, I'm expecting that to get better, and I I'm trying to get as much AL Central pitching oh, as absolutely. possible. Absolutely, I would I would take him. <laughs> the thing is, is um pick him up after tonight. I wouldn't start him against yes. the Dodgers. That and that's the big yeah, thing. No, no, this, this week <laughs> is a is an absolute no. But uh, yeah, it, yeah, like you know, just some of these guys that should uh, also probably getting you know rage dropped, right? Like Bailey Ober was dropped for sure that first week in a lot been, of leagues. But yeah, maybe. He sh- he and, really shouldn't have been. But hey, look, he he turned it around yesterday, went five strong against the Dodgers and reminded yep. you why you why he was climbing up boards, you know? Yep, exactly. Um, so yeah, again, yeah, wait, wait for that, wait for that rage drop. But uh somebody who's gonna start becoming a rage drop for me, because I keep having him. Uh, I'm I'm Cuban, Mike. As you know, you're Cuban as well. We mm-hmm. we bond over this, uh, Luis Robert. I at least have to have one Cuban on every team. I don't know; it just always happens. Hey, six to eight weeks. News wasn't awful on him. All right, but I mean, I'm trying to be optimistic here. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. They're talking about bringing Colas up from the minors. I mean, where does he fit in? Is he? I mean, because he doesn't. I mean, and then they're like, maybe it's a youth movement. I mean, Colas isn't the youth movement. What are you seeing here at all? Um, I mean, when Robert comes back, I mean, obviously they'll play him, but what's going on with the White Sox right now? I mean, they're not exactly the best team anyways. Right, Robert, oh, we're gonna, you, yeah, gonna, so you can see the, so people were watching to see the injury. Robert hurt his, uh, his Oh his, God, his, it's a non Oh, oh his, that's, that's, oh, hip that's strain good. or something like that. Uh, six to eight yeah. weeks was the, the initial prognosis was a grade two, three to four months. And then it came out the next day. It's going to be um, six to eight weeks, which is more palatable. But Colas, we've seen him. Unfortunately, we've seen what he can offer in the past. Yeah. Now, we also know he has some upside. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things where it's like... You sounded so disheartened there. Uh, he has some upside? <laughs> he has some upside because he does. He has Because Colas, here's the thing. The team obviously... Like so, the last regime was in on him, and yep. the new regime came in and was like, "Yeah, no, we're not that interested." Right. Sent him, sent him down without even right. much of a second thought. In AAA this year, he's doing his thing again. He's showing that upside. He has a home run. He has a stolen base. He has a he's now the strikeouts are way down, which is very encouraging because Colos is a guy that in AAA in twenty third twenty and yes last year twenty three percent strikeout or twenty two percent strikeout rate came to the majors, kind of struggled with strikeouts a little bit, uh, back up to twenty seven percent. But now it's back down to 12.5%. Maybe he's adjusting. Maybe Colas is just getting more comfortable at the higher levels. Right. Hitting really well. The bat bit isn't inflated, which is nice. So it's like one of those things where he's kind of earning that batting average. His big issue is going to be like, can he elevate the ball 48% this year in triple in triple A and 51 last year at the major league level? So that ground ball rate's still a concern. Yeah, there's speed, yeah, there's power, but he's probably gonna platoon because they platoon everybody right now. So if he comes up, he's gonna platoon. So Colas is limited. I'd say Colas has intrigue as a streamer. In 15 team leagues, but nothing more than that right now. At the so, end of the day, though, he's. I just feel like this team soured on him once the second that they have a chance. I feel like they'll just yeah. like, well, I'm so, if they sign Tommy Pham tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised type of thing. So let me ask you this for, I get, I know you're not a dynasty guy, but I'm just, you I'm play not. enough that I can ask you this. If I'm, own, if I'm owning, ugh, that's you, you can really say own, great. it's fine. No, no, it's not that. I put owning like as in like, I don't know. Anyway, if you own, if I, if I own Luis Rivera in my team, in a dynasty format, are you looking to sell ninety cents on the dollar? If if you can get ninety cents on the dollar, yeah, but um, it's hard to get that much. People are probably offering seventy cents on the dollar, and I don't right. want to get I don't want to give that up because at the end of the day, we know he's injury prone. This isn't a surprise. However, it's like hips and other soft tissues, and it's like really weird that I think he's like twenty six. He is. He's only yep, twenty six years old. Yep. He is turning twenty seven. He's still in his prime. I think you can still get solid years out of him. I don't quite, I wouldn't put that Byron Buxton tag on him yet in terms of like, I mean, he's close to Byron Buxton, but Buxton's never put up, he has two two seasons of 400 play appearances or more. Again, I know 400 is not a high, uh, a high standard, sure. but right, right. last year, you know, he played 145 games and almost six, just five short of 600 play appearances. So Robert, and in those that, games, how many home runs did he get? 38. Right. Uh, did so, when Buxton did that how many times? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but I, just think, I think I think where the comp comes in is that Buxton's a guy who just uh, we've seen Robert hit his potential, unfortunately, right. and we never saw Buxton. Buxton was kind of like in this idea of like being this elite prospect, and like we know the potential's there, but never hit it. But right. I, why, the reason why I'm putting that comp out there is the the health, sure. the health comp. Of course, it's, no, no. Because Robert, we've seen his we've seen the ceiling, but is that going to be the career year now? We don't, you know, it's hard to say it's not because as you get older, these injuries aren't going to just stop and he'll probably stop running more to keep to try to remain healthier. And which we've seen right. other stars do in the past. Um, but so I think if, if I'm, a, if I'm competing in a dynasty format, I'm definitely trying to get, take a shot on Robert, Robert. Um, if I'm in redraft, 
holding wise, I think I would hold in 15s and 12s. It's more fringe just because the that you, it's hard. It's easier to replace him in 12 teamers. It goes back to what's available on the waiver wire. But in a 15, right. the replacement value over the next six or six to eight weeks isn't as easy to come by. So I think he's worth holding on to in deeper formats. But in Dynasty, like I said, um, I'd be I'd be looking to buy if you're competing because he'll be back for at least the second half. Yeah. And if you can get less than if you can get him for like 70 cents on a dollar, I would take a shot at it. So speaking of somebody that's hurt to somebody that's healthy, but uh, is not uh, showing the Robert uh, signature um, stick. So Parker Meadows and Colt Keith came in, you know, just with a lot of fanfare and they're creeping up the you know boards there uh, at the end. Uh, Parker Meadows is hitting a uh, 0.08 with two stolen bases and two hits and 25 at bats. Uh, but at least he has almost a 300 OBP. And then Colt Keith has uh, eight hits, three RBIs, a 222 average, and 300 OBP. So a little bit, a little bit better. But uh, you know, these uh, two rookies are, are are they looking uh, with the Tigers? If it was anybody else, I'd be frightened. But I want love to know uh, from your point of view. You know, is are they in, about to lose some playing time here at all? So I've noticed recently, and it's not going to show, it's going to show, let's see. So today they face the lefty. This updates every morning, so it's not going to include today's lineup. You might want to zoom in just a little bit so we uh, can. Did, uh, did again? I it's okay. Don't worry about there it. My go. eyesight's not as good as it used to be. So that's um, that should be magnified a little bit. But, yeah, um, at the end of the day. So Parker Meadows didn't start today, and I don't believe he started against the last, last lefty. I can, right. uh, let's, let's, a, let's put the dates like, to the fourth and then. It's only been one lefty. Meadows did start against the last lefty. Maybe it's. I know it's been weird with his his starts against lefties lately. I know he sat against one today, and I saw him get pinch hit for a couple games. So that's part of the issue here. So he sat two out of the last three. That's what I was looking for. So yeah, Meadows has sat two of the last three against lefties, and he's been pinch hit for in games and stuff. So I think he's losing favor as an everyday player right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's in a strict platoon because obviously he started today or he didn't. He started at least one, he started the last game against lefties, but it's trending in the wrong direction. Now we're talking two out of three after starting two straight on the year, I believe, or one. Oh, it was weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm rambling at this point. Point being is Meadows is losing. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Meadows is losing a little bit of favor there. And Colt Keith, they just signed him that deal. I don't think, again, I don't think either of these guys are going to be strict platoons. Like now, this makes Keith's second start out of four total lefties they've now faced this year. So he's not a full time player against lefties either. But with that said, they're not in strict platoons. Like you can see, Kerry Carpenter has zero starts against lefties this year. Zach McKinstry has zero starts against lefties this year. Those guys are strict platoons. Those guys are strictly um, playing time concerns. And McKinstry is limited on, on top of platooning. McKinstry is not even playing every day against righties, but Kerry Carpenter is. So at least Carpenter has that going for him. With that said, though, um, yeah, both those guys have some concerns. It's tough. And 12 is tough to roster them right now with any type of, uh, like, uh, the word here um not concerned the, uh, the one where you uh the, the word that <laughs> i'm having a hard time tonight the word the, where, uh, uh so confidence, not concerned confidence, confidence confidence any type of confidence apparently i'm lacking confidence tonight with the way i'm talking hey you know what but, uh, i'm confident in you you'll pick it up in yeah, the second half i'm glad one of us has it but um yeah yeah so, so uh, sorry. So, I mean, so I guess, I mean, look, you know, a Cole Keith has six starts there in the six hole. I mean, that's, you know, not, you know, great, but at least Parker Meadows is still starting to lead off. He's leading off that, against right. Except for that is two, uh, you know, two uh, spots in the ninth. I mean, that's against lefties. So when he yeah, does yeah. play, but so, so that's fine. But like you mentioned, he's still leading off. So of the two, I'm definitely more optimistic. I would definitely, and I like Cole Keith. And I think it's not fair because it's cold. It's still really cold within Detroit where they're playing. And I think you give them a chance to warm up now. Are they must starts in 12s? No, but if I'm stashing one of the two, I'm picking Meadows because Meadows is at least stealing bases. And that's right. a more valuable skill set than hitting home runs, in my opinion. But I think they'll both hit home runs and, the, and I think they both can steal some bet bags. But I think Meadows will steal more. But I also think Meadows is going to be just fine. Colt Keith is being a rookie. I know they paid him and they're going to give him runway. So the playing time's there. So in 15s, you're holding on to both. In 12s, I'm okay cutting Keith of the two. I just think that let the weather warm up. Let these guys get some, you know, nope. some regular, nope. some two, uh, two and a half weeks in, buddy. Decision time. I'm very, very, um, <laughs> I'm a lot more liberal on waiting for, let, let, give your guys a chance. Now, do you, have, you don't have to start them, right. but um, if you can hold on to them, at least again, in 12s, Colt Keith, I'm fine letting go because I don't think his skill sets anything special. I think Meadows has a little more upside, even but even then in twelves you could probably let and shallow you could probably let him go if you really need to. I just okay. rather not if I can. I know right. in, in for instance NFC formats OCs, I have them. That's a five outfielder, twelve team league, and even in that league, outfield kind of thins out. But 
I can find guys on the waiver wire right now that could play better than Meadows. I just don't know if Meadows is somebody because if I, I know I know if I saw Meadows on the waiver wire, I'd probably want to pick him up at least hold on to him if I can. So that's exactly. where Meadows. I think so. At the end of the day, he's a fringe in that format. Anything shallower though, probably get, you could probably move on and just be hurry, hurry up, pick him back up if he gets going. But yeah, I think he'll be fine. I'm less, I'm a lot less concerned with Meadows for the day. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more general here. You know, uh, I would love to know kind of I, I, I know we see like Connor Joe being added everywhere and a couple of the other, the other places. But, uh, you know, overall, using your tools that you have here, you know, take your time to pull it up and uh, all that. But, uh, you know, which players you see gaining the most at bats, especially over the last week, two weeks, whatever it could be. So that way we could really kind of ha- start having a look at that, because uh, I know everybody's like, well, you know, I'll just look at the the most recent free agent pickup and, and those types of things as well. So. You know, I would love to know kind of, uh, you know, what your tool is saying and obviously what you uh, see off the top of your head. So I wrote up the AL and NL playing time reports Ooh. for the site. Awesome. So um, for those who are listening, MLBPlayingTime.com, I wrote them both up. I put them on Twitter and all that, too. But uh, so we can go through. I, I do sure. have date. I, I, tell, I show you the date ranges and I cover how many games they play and all that stuff. And um, if we yeah. go through it, it's more so plat- it's watching platoons. You have like the Marlins who, you know, they're left to right platoons. So you have to be very mindful of that, like Jesus Sanchez. And Nick Gordon kind of being uh, interesting in deeper formats, but they've been playing so many lefties. Whit Merrifield's like not playing at all, so he's a guy that three starts out of the last seven. Not someone who's going who's getting regular playing time. Meanwhile, Brandon Marsh is gaining playing time in terms of like expectations. I, he wow. came in the year at least for me. Brandon mm-hmm. Marsh was projected to platoon because we saw it so much last year, but he's started against two of the last three lefties entering tonight, and wow. we're recording. <laughs> probably should we should probably start manager mentioning, hey, we're recording on the ninth, so four nine on a Monday. Or Tuesday, whatever it is. I think it's yep. Monday, Tuesday. See, I don't even know. But we should probably mention that to people. So when they listen to this, if it's like a Thursday and things change. But uh, anyway, I'm glad we got there eventually. Things so, will never change. What are you doing? Yeah, especially with this, right? Stuff like this never changes. We don't talk right. about playing. Playing time doesn't change on a daily basis. Injuries don't happen every single day, which is getting ridiculous. But not at all. We, we already ranted on that. So Whit, Mer- Whit Merrifield kind of being not that it was a surprise. I kind of always had him project as a part time player on the site, right? But um, it's like really part time, and it's going to take some. It looks like it's going to take an injury or a complete collapse of a guy like a Johan Rojas or Johan. Ro- I don't know how to say his first name, but uh, he's the center fielder that he has the really good glove, and I. I saw him get a couple of hits in a couple of spots last uh, the last few days, so maybe he's coming around. But Brandon Marsh gaining some playing time, hitting well. He's a guy that I think he's being overlooked right now. Uh, Trey Lipscomb, yep. he's stealing bases, plays every day, bats six through eight in the order for the Nationals. So he's a guy that maybe you're overlooking. And then Jesse Winker and Joey Gallo blasts from the past. Um, those guys also just playing a lot. Now, is there a lot to them? Maybe not. Probably not. But playing every day, sometimes I playing mean, time is all you need. It's right? so hard for me to see jesse not in either in a mariners uniform or a reds uniform and then gallo not in a rangers uniform it's just crazy to me even even gallo in a yankees uniform because that's when the downfall really began right and yeah, yeah. And he was yeah. just so hated but yeah i agree it's weird but um going to going over to the the central you have michael bush playing every day which i was kind of surprised about because again another guy i expected to be more of a platoon bat but he's been playing against lefties even the reds benson still every day um the brewers oliver dunn getting more run He's kind of running hot right now, although he, last few games, I think he's kind of slowed down a little bit. That's just the nature of this, like these types of players. Right. A little bit, they're swing and miss to his game. Dunn has the tools, but and he has the playing time right now against righties. He has been a platoon bat all year, but he's trended up because he was a guy who was kind of, you know, three out of five. And this, you know, he's like five out of six. So he, I think his playing time will be dictated based on his performance. And, by the way, I love that you alphabetized it by team name. That's so useful because some people yeah. do it by, uh, you know, by, by division. And, uh, well, I do, but, I but, 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 but they do it by standings sometimes, and it uh, drives me nuts. I'm like, Chicago, then what? Milwaukee? Why is Milwaukee? Yeah, so thank you for alphabetizing. Yeah. I, I, I go division. I, I have done it both ways. I, I'm not sure how which way I prefer it, but I do go division then al- and then alphabetize it. So it's it's division, then the city in order, of the city alphabet. So. Because I like to keep everything within the division. I don't know it's weird. Just a kind of a format I've always picked up on and just seem to enjoy. But uh, Connor Joe continues to be a mostly everyday player. He, yep. I think he played today again as well. He did not start today against a righty. So it's like he plays against every lefty. Cut, cut, cut him. Cut him. Cut him now. Well, he's, he started. So now this this makes four of the last seven righties. So it's one of those things where he's a part-time reverse righty. He plays every day against lefties. He came in today. He pinch hit. So he gets pinch hit at bats. So he's not exactly... He's not full on platoon, but it's one of those things where it's tough in shallower formats because Connor Joe's numbers look flashy. But in shallower formats, you're chasing, you want guys with like, there's no reason to take a guy on like this that has the risk of playing four out of seven games in a week compared right. to like a guy who's going to play six out of seven. You know, it's just right. 
the, the math ain't math and i don't care like the per play appearance uh production might be better but that's right. almost like by it's more like that's less it's more luck than is skill at that point because you should be chasing play appearances because more play appearances equal more opportunity to post production right so right. um anyway i'm getting way beyond that uh michael a. taylor's fluctuated as well joey bart's come in and He's hitting well, unfortunately, and he's kind of keeping Henry Davis like almost splitting time right now. So that's annoying. So Henry Davis is kind of losing. And, you know, one thing we've learned really quick, my, my crush on Henry Davis for some reason, it's 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 real. It's real. And I don't even have him in. I have a, I have a good amount of shares, but none in like the most important leagues. Doesn't matter. Still rooting for him. He's just he's just my guy. I don't know what it is. Um, Going through the West and not a whole lot here. Blaze Alexander, obviously, uh, I think just real to- quick. So people know uh, Mike actually got into three fights uh verbally uh over henry davis so just want to let you all at know least, that, that at least at least so yeah it was it got ugly there at the end but um, yeah it's uh luckily he made the team but he hasn't really earned it since and unfortunately like the hot spring kind of died in spring Ugh, what we what we would do like hopefully he's not the next lewis brinson right right um but blaze alexander is a guy that i've taken a liking to he is he got his first start against a righty of the seat they've played seven lefties out of like 12 games this year it's been stupid the diamondbacks oh. schedule but I mean, with a name like Blaze, come on, man! You, you gotta, gotta pick it. Gotta root for him. Um, but yeah, so Blaze Alexander, he's gonna he's he started against a righty tonight, so we'll see if that holds because Perdomo's out, and that's kind of a playing time gainer there. And um, Outman's stuck in a platoon. I was kind of surprised. I didn't expect him to be in such a strict platoon, but he has been. Wilmer Flores has lost playing time because uh, Yastrzemski returned, starting lot three of the last seven. He usually gets right. Uh, he did not. So yeah, normally Flores is a weak side platoon bat. Yaz was out. Flores played every day. Yaz is in. Conforto's back in tonight. Uh, Wilmer's back out. So Flores is more of an opportunistic playing time guy. And that's just the NL. We can go through the whole AL, but I feel like we have other things we can get to. What? Well, how about this? How about this? How about you up. just hit hit the guys you like in the AL? Just so, hit the big hit the hit the big numbers. Colton Kowser. Um, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. He played over Hayes tonight, and that's kind of one of the first times we've seen it because when he, when Colton Kowser played last week, it was when Hayes was out dealing with illness. A Hayes Kowser platoon has always made sense to me since the moment they mentioned they were keeping him up. My initial projection was that, and then they didn't play Kowser for the first week, but right. maybe that's happening. And Kowser's earning it; he is hitting. Hayes is not. Again, small samples, but that might be all that matters for a team like the Orioles when they have so much depth. They need to play their best players. Uh, obviously stories out David Hamilton's in that's a strong side platoon guy speed a little bit of pop he's he's kind of interesting all right right there stop 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 Super go up stop. a little bit right there Curtis Mead everybody going into this year knew that Curtis Mead for Tampa Bay oh, you know go. was gonna you know had the talent but was he gonna play and and what what are we seeing here he's not playing <laughs> he's not playing <laughs> he's just not playing enough he's very incon- it's the Rays they're they're playing matchups like Curtis Mead's in tonight but it's another lefty he faces lefties but um, he's obviously faced just one out of the last like four righties. So it's more so again another like <sighs> when Brandon Lau was out, Lau yeah. would that, that's where Mer, that's where Mead was starting to get some run. But then okay. Lau came back after one missed game, and then that kind of ended. So Mead's more of a weak side platoon bat and oper- similar him and Ahmed Rosario kind of in that weak side platoon role. Need injuries for the right to get more at bats against righties, which is weird because Mead was like a top prospect of theirs right. for like a year. So and also, you know, he he killed it for the um, the Australia national team. I mean, he he's in a he's a top three you know prospect, top four prospect. You can fight, you know, with the, as loaded as that team is. I, I just I'm looking for that time when they trade him um, because I'll there's just no other way. Yeah. Well, they did the same thing with what's it, it took. What's his face a few years, to, like a year or so to break out as a regular. Um, he's on the team now. Um, let me see if it's right here. I can't. I, I told you. Uh, I, Isak Paredes. Yeah. He was a guy they traded for and was a weak side platoon back for like a half a season or more before yeah. he, they're like, hey, we have nobody left. You can play here. And then he just realized they should. They, they're like, oh, wait, you really can hit righties. <laughs> And then he's it's amazing every, if we let you play every day, you can figure it out. Well, especially a righty. I, I understand lefty bats struggling against lefties being a more common thing because coming up, lefty hitters don't face as many lefty pitchers, right? But when right. you're a righty hitter, you face righty pitchers your whole life and a lot of them. So you should be able to, if you can't hit righties, it's gonna be hard for me to believe that you can make the league in general. Right. So th- those platoon when you're platooning rookies or like very young players with, with pedigree against and you're not playing against righties regularly. I feel like you're doing them a disservice because there's a reason why they're a top prospect or, or one of the t- a top organizational prospect. And you're just taking that away from them from 
day one. It's, I feel like it's just a disservice, but the Rays are going to Ray. And honestly, I don't know more. I can't sit here and act like I know more than the Rays. I'm just surprised. You know a little bit more than them. Could you imagine? I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be doing this, uh, this podcast. Yes, right you would be. I probably would be. You missed me already. Oh, it's not you. It's not, it's not you. It's me. No, but, uh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we can move on from mead. Uh, um, yeah. well, keep going, keep going. Okay. Oh, there, was, I mean, there was another one. There was another yes, one. You to talk there's about? another one. If you keep, uh, Loriano stole Keith. second, Loriano stole second and third base tonight, even though wow, he's barely, that's, he barely that's plays. That's great. Really, really, um, really excited about that. The one I want is in the West. Oh, here yes, we go. We'll, okay, we'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. A little further down. No, nope. we'll, we'll get there. We'll get well, there. Rangifo, wait, yeah, yeah, play, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll go back up. Well, we'll go on. to the Rangers. Okay, is, go to the Rangers. Getting... The one we're getting all the questions about is the Rangers, and the Rangers is has Evan Carter picked up at bats for the left-handed pitchers? I mean, I yes. want to say eighty percent of our mailbox <laughs> is that. Um, I think he has. I, I know he sat against one. Let me pull up the actual. Um... In order, first we'll go back. We'll talk about Rangifo. Uh, yeah. Let me tell me how Rangifo. While I have it in front of me, so then go oh, back. Hey, to Rangifo right. away. I am not gonna. So, I'm just merely telling you that Carter. If I get one more question about Carter today, my mailbox will explode. So Rang- Rangifo, um, he did two of the last six. He started against, which is nothing, but I think it's like two straight now because he started today as well. Batting, really? He's batting. He's playing shortstop. So here's the thing. He's doing the whole everyone. He's giving everyone a day off thing. He played uh, yesterday. I think Shenwell sat. Nolan Sh- 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 Oh no, it was a lefty. So Nolan Sh- Sh- Chanel always sits against lefties. Sh- Shenwell. Right. He sits against lefties not all the time, but most of the time. And so he so Rangifo slotted in today against a righty. Rangifo's in there, but Neto's out, so it's Neto's for day off. So it's hard to say Rangifo. Uh, it's one of things like, hey, cautious, optimistic here, but be right. be aware. Rangifo has played, and Rangifo's performing. But the problem is, is he's been playing when players are taking days off, and this could right. be one of those day- weeks where maybe Rendon gets a day off tomorrow, so Rangifo stays in. And then Rangifo sits, but oh, Rangifo played three out of four. And then Rangifo, so it's one of those things you just have to be mindful. Rangifo is that guy still right. that he's kind of like the hey, we're gonna use him as a utility guy and give everyone a day off this week. And then next week he's back to playing two games. At least that's how it could be. I'm not right. saying we don't react or get or take a chance if he's on the waiver wire, but just be mindful that his playing time just because he's played a couple games in a row. Not I'm not ready to call him a starter just yet. Now okay. back to Evan Carter because we can actually go to the site and pull up the, the handy dandy tool. Maybe I, maybe I can get back to the site. Oh, what's going on here? Come on, take me back. Business site. There we go. Ah, here we go. I redid the front page to make it easier to find these things. Okay, so the Rangers. So let's just we can look at the whole and again, people watching definitely better uh, than the people listening because you guys don't get to watch all the, the changes. So here we are. So they faced only two lefties this year, and I think he started he started against two of them. Wait, that doesn't make okay. sense. I saw him sit the other day against right. one I thought. And maybe you said this, they, they played against how many lefties? Only it looks like two, maybe three. Maybe it's, maybe it's three, and just everyone. No, it has to be two. I think. Yeah, because uh, well, Corey Seager was hurt, so that doesn't count. Dol- uh, Garcia only played two. I'd have to say two uh, or maybe three at most, but yeah, it looks like um, he's he, playing. He's, he's playing tonight too against lefty. I know. Wow. Carter, I know Carter. Oh no. You know what? Carter sat against a righty. Yep. Yep. He did. I, I was looking at this screen. Cause I remember looking at like, Okay. Evan Carter got a day off. And I looked, I'm like, Oh, he's against a righty. That's weird. Cause he just, he just got a day off. I thought maybe they maybe. I figured they were going to line up Carter's days off against lefties. Cause it makes sense. Especially when they, this is their third of the year. So if they wanted to give him one or two days off this year. I'm surprised. They're like, you know what? It's a tough lefty up there. It's going to be off, but it's Alex Wood. So, but you have to remember Evan Carter, he's batting. So he was batting third. He is batting fifth right now. He's moved down to the five spot. And you see these eights, these eights right here. That's again, that's lefties. And he's batting eighth against eighth again tonight. And they did mention like, hey, Carter, Carter's aware. He's very actually self aware of like, hey, my struggles with lefties are are there. But I he's like, I I think I could do better. And the team's giving him a chance to, which is nice to see. This is how you treat a young prospect that's 21 years old with potential. You give him a shot. And if he sucks, You, you move on, but it's weird because well, Carter's he, not, Carter's just so his his zone recognition is yep. stupid good. Like you you look at the problem is, is you look at a stat line, it's underwhelming. One stolen base, no home runs. I, I know because I have a couple shares. No, batting average isn't there, but he's walking in like thirty. He, he last I looked, he was walking like thirty nine times. walks in twenty. Uh, so in 30, 38 plate appearances. I mean that's stupid. Twenty three percent, and the strikeout rate is below ten percent. This kid. Just has such a recognition of the zone. He started right now. 0 for 15. That doesn't include his walks. And then he, you know, he's, he's three doubles. I mean, just busting out. Uh, you know, he knew it was a matter of time. But at the same time, I'm just glad to see the team, like you said, not pull a raise and be like, you're now platoon. And they're really going to let him have a chance to, you know, show what he can do. I mean, 
21 years old. I, I don't think anybody kind of knows what they could do at 21 just yet. So giving them that chance is really amazing. I, I, I still, I'm 30, I'm turning 34 and I still don't know what I can do with my life. Like I'm still pretending I'm, I, I, I'm you're not a day over 18. Son. I wish uh, <laughs> my back tells me otherwise. I'm too young for this problem. But yeah, well, I, it, I look, I, people might look at my thing is, is people look at Evan Carter's uh, uh, fan grass page right now. They might mm-hmm. be uh, like, they might be concerned because of the 172 batting average. And I understand that, but when you look at the peripherals, like a set, I got eight percent strikeout rate, less than eight percent right. double digit walk rate. And if you go lower and you look at like the plate discipline, he's chasing, like at not he's not existent with the chase rate. His swing and strikes are not he's not missing. He has no whiffs in his game, and he has a, an elite zone contact rate. So his recognition of the zone is uh, it's immaculate right now. Right. So you you know the tools are there. I it's just well, he's somebody I'm preaching patience with, and I'm not taking him out of my lineup because it's not for it's not a lack of it's not a lack of recognition. It's just a lack of production. And I think the production comes when you're seeing the ball that well. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 385 it's, OPP. I mean, that's, with nothing that's, else. Yeah, his OPP is yeah. higher than his slug and average combined almost. Like, that's yeah, sad. But but it's it's, it's going to tick up. I mean, somebody that's what I'm that's, saying, yeah, I, I'm not worried at all. He, and I know OBP isn't a category for everybody, but I think, I think the rest will come. I just, I would just be, I would just be patient. I think it's coming for Evan Carter. Maybe maybe Anybody. it's cautious. Maybe it's because I'm a little biased having a few shares. But when you look at that profile, it just screams like, "Man, this guy can see the zone." It's like these are like Juan Soto type of zone recognition numbers, which I would not going to put that comp on Evan Carter by any means. But just so you're saying he'd be, he's exactly like Juan Soto. Got yes. it. All right. Uh, <laughs> just exactly ca- so at 36 minutes into the show, Evan Carter equals Juan Soto. Not yes. market. Yes. Power and all. Yes. All right. So anybody else you want to highlight in the ALs? Uh, now that I, I'm sorry I made you go to the guy, but if I get one more mailbox thing, like I said, I'm going to lose it. Hey, I'm glad you're getting mailbox questions about it. Uh, no, I got I got uh, nothing else. We touched all right. That well, then I need to go from uh, a team that is pretty good to their doppelgangers in AAA just being ridiculously dominant. The AAA Orioles squad, I mean, let's look at these numbers, please. Uh <laughs> I mean, Jackson Holiday. Okay, I guess that's okay. Two home runs, nine RBIs. <laughs> well, you know, like you know, eleven hundred OPS. <laughs> but look, yeah, Kierstad is just going stupid. I mean, that's almost. Oh my god, it's not like he just played one game either. It's like you know, six home runs, twenty five RBIs. Then you got Norby over there too, and then Mayo. Who Mayo to me is one of the most exciting prospects on from a sheer fan perspective that no he one cares about like in fall <laughs> so hard so hard and it's not like he's just a uh, gallo right he's not up there just striking out he spits on balls and he will just whoa, whoa, whoa. What, did, what does he do Spits on a ball that, there it oh, is that's uh, uh, <laughs> sorry sorry Listen, uh, this isn't this isn't this is sunday morning cartoons uh, yeah although, sorry although, about that I yeah a, i uh I am a child. obviously i, I child. uh yeah so sorry he will absolutely just look at a ball and be like, no, thank you. Uh, I'm waiting for the ball down the middle uh, and then just tattoo it. And I, I mean, I, I, would, I can't wait to see him in a home run derby. But where, like, who's coming up? Where do they play? And who's getting traded? This is nuts. This is Tampa Bay Rays of like three years ago. Well, and Tampa Bay Rays every year since. But what is going on? So they went and they decided to go and get Corbin Burns and turn around and still have all their top prospects <laughs> afterwards. Um, it looks, I just don't understand. Why, I think maybe by the trade, trade line, we see something, but I don't know, man, this team, I don't understand why they're forcing at bats into Ryan O'Hearn's uh, yes. direction or, but here's the thing. O'Hearn has a six sixty seven slug. The dude is like, so, okay. Well, about Ryan Mountcastle? Oh, he's hitting, he's hitting the ball. They, these, both these guys have like 900 plus OPSs. Right. And then you have Colton Kowser, who has over a thousand OPS limited sample, but he's hitting the ball well right now. So it's like he's one of the guys where that would be the clear like way to get somebody in the lineup. You know, no, right. uh, they have guys like Urias and whatnot that are that are, but those are depth pieces. Those are MLB right. caliber depth opportunity. Like those guys aren't playing every day as it is. Um, I'd say right now, Matt Mullins being the weak link, which I didn't expect that to be necessarily the thing right away. But Mullins even as a weak link, two homers and stolen base, but. In terms of like real life production, he's not really hacking it. So maybe him and Westberg, and I know Westberg kind of like the popular. Hey, why is he even up? Because I think right. Westberg could be. I think Westberg should be Ramon Urias's role. They should. Right. I th- but I think they. They've mentioned. They've mentioned Urias being like, "Hey, we're gonna trade Urias," but nobody wants him because they recognize that you. I think teams are starting to recognize that the Orioles have too much. 
Right. And instead it's like of the, out, it's like that team that has way too many players, and you're just like, I'm not even gonna trade with you. You have to drop somebody. You're way over the player limit. Yeah, that's and that's what they, I feel like they they know this. But the thing is, is this team is performing, and you would and Santander is kind of like a league average player, like above average bat, but league average like real life. So maybe they, someone trades for him. And the thing is, is they have it's a, it's an embarrassment of riches, and this team could literally give up five players, and we have four on the screen right here that are ready to come up and right. be and be a contributing member to society, so to speak, a contributing member to this team. It's just, it's wild. It's absolutely wild that there's this much talent on one minor league system right now. All right. Well, it's it's wild to me. I, I want all those players on my fantasy uh, team, uh, that, and I, I should just be able to get them whenever I want. Um, all right. So um, I know who, who I was getting most questions from readers about. Who who are you getting questions about there, Mike? So I have a few points here. I'm just, I just wrote down. I can run through them real quick. Or run through them slow. We're in no hurry. Um, so yeah, we actually saw a couple comments coming. That's why I was reading those too. Um, okay. well, the thing was, we talked about Trevor Story's done for the year. David Hamilton was the next guy up. I just wanted to bring that up real quick, just because a little bit of speed, not as over power, and he should play every day against righties. I think Pablo Reyes platoons with them. Platoon twins, the platoon twins, the platoon kings in the Minnesota Twins. Those guys, man, I actually want to see their lineup tonight. So they started Austin Martin against a righty. So I don't think they have an everyday guy. Austin Martin is the first man because uh, Max Kepler just went on the IL. So that's another guy that's injured. They called up Jose Miranda. Miranda's in as well tonight. They're both um, Miranda and Austin Martin are facing righties, but who knows any given night because uh, Julian's in, Castro's in. I gotta look to see who else. They have a whole bunch of options. It's 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 madness. I pro- actually I projected Jose Miranda. I didn't project Martin. Why? Oh, they also have Margot, but he faces he's more of a weak side platoon guy. It's a it's a mess. But outside of uh, Austin Martin and Miranda, we're watching to see the rest of the fallout here. Okay, uh, you know, Jose Miranda, real quick, I was really stock up on this guy. Like, I was really expecting a lot more, and I don't know if it's just, you know, he's been found out, and they've exploited a hole. He would, I mean, he, he showed some numbers, and he had a pretty quick, you know, uh, debut last year as well. Some people think it's because of his link to Lynn manuel Miranda, that that's why he's as good as he is, because uh, that's his cousin, actually. Did you know yeah. that? I remember uh, hearing some of that actually. Yeah, so you know the whole uh, you know Hamilton thing as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was I don't know. It just seems like he got exposed, or maybe he lost confidence or what. But it just it feel like he dropped quick. Um, I was really expecting more out of him, especially as an everyday player for the Twins. So sorry about that little segue. No, I think a lot of people did. It, the hit tool wasn't a problem, and he still never really struck out a whole lot. It's the power never came, and yes. he chased it a lot. He made a lot. Of, I think the problem was is Miranda made a lot of contact outside the zone as well. So it's like. That leads to weak contact, which leads to not being able to tap into that power. Plus, now I think he's coming off of a shoulder surgery and injury, so that sapped his potential for upside in terms of power production. So I right. think Miranda was a guy that was like a a decent hitter, like a real life hitter, almost like reminds me a lot of Willie Castro back. Not Willie really Castro, um, Willie Calhoun. Oh yeah, God, like Willie he was Calhoun. kind of like that hit tool guy yes. with some upside that just never panned out. And not that Miranda was a like direct comp to that, but that's kind of the skill set that comes to mind. Was like. Miranda had the hit tool, but we kind of hoped that we dreamed on the power to kind of take a tick uptick because bigger guy kind of looked like he's six two two ten. At least he's, that's how he's listed on fan graphs. You expected so, some power to come from that. And so we we have a Willie Calhoun comp. We had a Juan Soto comp on the show. I think we're kind of that's really really drastic stark differences. And uh, <laughs> I, there, I mean, a lot of a lot of places are the same. You know, if I got a Willie Calhoun comp and a Juan Soto comp, I'd be happy. Um, we did get this question here. Uh, or just somebody was just talking about uh, these injuries are the worst, and I, we want to empathize with you or sympathize. Which one is it? I always mix those two. Up. Uh, both. We'll just we'll we'll hedge. We'll say we'll sympathize while empathizing. How about that? And of course, thanks. That's a good friend of mine. She uh, decided she wanted to hop in and just say all hell the king. She likes to get in on the fun with the whole king curling thing. I love it. Co- coworker king. of mine actually a lot of fun to. She likes to tease me, or she used to tease me at work about it. It's really funny. But um, yeah. Anyway, back to the. Uh, what, let's see the outline here. No problem. So, so hey, okay. useful platoon players. We uh, talked you know, about them already. We talked about some of them already, but there's one name on there that you didn't talk about, and the, uh, two actually. Uh, well, but David Hamilton, uh, not the David Hamilton, or which David Hamilton are we talking about here? I think it's the same one I was just mentioning with the with the uh, with the Red Sox, David Hamilton. Yep. I just yeah, same, wanted same to, one. Same yeah, as I, guy. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't somebody yeah, else. And, uh, unfortunately, it's it's kind of I I I, I put these I wrote this, all this down and then I realized oh we're gonna go over this as the show goes on. But it's, okay. hey, you know what though? At the same time, we've had a couple of play, times where we've missed something, so that's important. 
Uh, David Bednar, uh, Bednar, uh, Bednar, uh, just allowed four runs today. Uh, any uh, the Pirates kind of closing situation was already a mess, but you know this is even more fun. Do you think he's a uh, next man up, or do you think they're going to stick with him? So I think Chapman would be the next man up if you're if you want to spec, but I think Bednar gets a little bit longer of a leash. You have to remember though, people might not want to, or people might not remember that he came back from an injury in spring, got a little bit of work. And I think he's still, I think Ben are still working his way up through, okay. you know, through that. So I think it's one of those things where a late camp mixed with just coming off that injury. Maybe he's not, maybe he's not hundred percent. That is something you actually have to be concerned about. Right. But at the end of the day, um, I think Ben, yeah, with all the pitching injuries, of course you have to be concerned. Yeah, absolutely. About <laughs> but I think, I do think that that's kind of, um, that's what I'm getting at with him is uh, I think it's more so a, he's still building up more than anything right. else. Well, before you know we kind of call it a day here i would love to know just from an overall or you know anything kind of hidden here anybody you're kind of having keeping an eye on obviously i know you play in a lot of money league so i don't want you to have to mess up anything there that you're kind of putting on but anybody that you're kind of watching or anything like that that you think uh everybody would be interested in as well even if it's one of those deep finds um i don't know <laughs> there's I, I mentioned all of them actually because like some of these okay. guys here I mentioned a lot tonight. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there anybody you have in mind? Why? Well, I, I mean, you know, look, obviously Pasquatino, um, you know, I, I keep hoping, like, I keep feeling like him and Casas, right? Like, in the sense of Casas, we kept being like, just swing the bat, right? Just swing the bat. And Pasquatino just seems to be going so slow out of the gate here. And I just keep hoping he's going to just start being a little bit more aggressive. I mean, 5Ks is great. Nine games, 33 at-bats. But I just, you know, I, I expect if you have people that are kind of, in you know not paying attention as much you could definitely i think grab somebody who might be a little upset there with pasquatino's slow start uh but you know definitely at the same time too just kind of looking at the who might be the next man up here because there's just so much going on when it comes to uh injuries and things of that nature i mean and then on top of that what you know who started with injuries as well right you know we have the malls of the world uh and, and some of these other guys that were just and brash all these people that should be coming up but are going to probably be rushed even quicker i mean spear just went down for seattle it just, it's just a mess and so i don't know I'm, I'm just trying to find warm bodies at this point that might be healthy so at this point i'm like oh uh he's healthy i don't even know who that guy is but okay is that him so oh, <laughs> at the uh, moment uh, it's not uh, very scientific I was going to say, uh, right. Well, the good thing about outfield, like if, on the offensive side of things, is that there's so many platoon bats available. Right. People are kind of people are kind of coming around on Blackman. I like Blackman. I don't think he's sexy or or, or fun, but he's going to play every day and lead off for 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 Milwaukee. Wow. Yeah. Since when has he played for Milwaukee? For Colorado. I was uh, about so, to. I, I you really freaked me out there for a second. I was like, did he get traded? Uh, so <laughs> no for for Colorado. So Blackman's like uh not fun or sexy pick, but well, Blackman's his... also sixty eight years old. So yeah. I mean, it's a right. little he's, bit. He's he stole base. He's hitting like he's hitting like three hundred right now, and he's playing wow. against lefties. So he leads off every day, regardless, which is wow. interesting because that has value in most formats. Um, I mentioned Brandon Marsh, kind of like an overlooked unsung hero type. Right. Um, that's more of a shallower league because I had I had him in one fifteen, and I was like, I didn't realize he was doing that good. I don't think I was starting him every. Obviously, Bryce Terang's on fire. I don't expect that to hold, though. So he's a sell high type. Um, I'm just looking. I'm literally looking at what about team. what about Luis Gill? You know, somebody who's like 62 percent rostered. He's uh, just too good right now. OK, what are you going to do? Get more pitching? Nobody has pitching to trade for him. So it's like you're kind of stuck. Like you're kind of stuck with whoever you got and hoping that they can eventually <laughs> get to where you need them to get. That's the <laughs> no, issue. what I meant. But I, great point. But what I meant was, uh, you know, if you have a little extra pitching, which I, I obviously we should now be hoarding like nobody's business, but I, I'm, I'm almost thinking that this is the precipice. I, I don't know if you could, you know, 14 strikeouts to two starts. I, he looked amazing during spring training, but I, I'm almost wanting to sell high here pretty soon, seeing if we can get one of those pitchers, uh, desperate teams to give me somebody else if I have an extra pitcher or two. So the issues are the walks. It's like seven per nine right now. It's stupid. Right. But right. the K percentage is 30, 37%. Like, even with the 18.4% walk, is it 18.4% walk rate? That's just stupid. Wow. It's, um, but he, he's, it's like the, it's like the batter. If I'm in the batter's box, I don't know if that ball's coming to my head. <laughs> like, you know, you know what? A, it's, I, I, right now, I would be happy to find a Luis. Uh, I think it's heel, actually, which is funny. Oh, my apologies. Heel. No, 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 don't worry. I don't care if you mispronounce it. This isn't, I'm not going to, he like, will. Oh, how dare I, mean, you? I, I, I don't run that fast. So if he comes after me, I, that, I that I'm that not a fast runner. It doesn't matter. 
<laughs> it, he might hit me with one of those balls that are outside of the zone. Who knows? I, all yeah. the way in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's playing in New York. Yeah. Um, there you go. But yeah, it's uh, so he's, I don't know, man. I, I don't do track. So fun fact, I don't play in trading leagues for this reason. I don't like, I like to like, you have to earn your stripes. You, you pick up who you pick up, you draft who you draft. And if you get hit by injuries, that sucks, but that's part of the game. We all usually take hits throughout the season. And I, I've like, I've learned to, plus I don't have the time to do this, uh, the, the trading stuff anymore. So my trade advice, that's probably one of my weakest spots as an analyst these days, because I like to, I like to always just write out. I, I'm big on like, you know what? I'll write it till the wheels fall off. I want the production. You give me that. I'll take the production. And then like, like uh crochet, I'm going to ride crochet until he's not giving me that production anymore because how many more times, how many more pitchers are going to go down? And I trade away from a strength that's no longer a strength anymore. That's another right. reason why trades kind of screw you. Although I understand they're fun because I used to be a huge like proponent of trade leagues, daily leagues. I just don't, I don't have time for them anymore. But I also like when I like not I like I hate when a trade also makes the whole league kind of like hey look this trade happened it's an awful trade and it like make and then the whole league is like lopsided now because of an awful right. trade because I also don't believe in vetoes because I think vetoes are stupid. I'm not, you shouldn't be managing my team unless it's obvious collusion, but. Right. Like if I'm trading Trout for Luis Heel, then yeah, that's that's bad. Right. You, you veto that, but you know what I mean. That's what regardless. I'm Boy. now you got look. You got me on a whole other rant. Look at you. Uh, and that King Curlin story hour is brought to you by Burger King <laughs> as well. I just wanted to thank you so much. Come on down, grab a Whopper at the Kings. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, again, thanks everybody so much for watching. Um, and again, catch us here next week as well as we go over. The first week ever with no injuries. That's what this week's going to be. It's going to be starting no now. more injuries. S starting, now. starting now. 7.52 p.m. Central. Did you, did you see no your Moncada went down, right? That, that happened earlier today, before tonight. <sighs> did you not see that? Here, I'll show it to you on the way out real quick. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Let me find you it. You can hear me cry on the way out. Hold on, hold on. I, I got it. I got it. Give me, give me a second. Share this tab. It's going to be another one of those non-contact. Yep. It was right there. Ah. Oh, another one. Come hey, on. Oh, out the batter's box. Gunning it, gunning it, gunning it, and just pulls up. It's a left abductor strain, apparently. Uh, yeah, I, I know so exactly whole, where that is. The whole white it's on yeah, the, the left side of your body somewhere. Yes, <laughs> in, the, in the abductor region. In the abductor, yeah, somewhere between my toes and my head. Yeah, uh, on the right. Side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he it's he's done for <laughs> a bit. That whole team, that's a snake. Talk, talk, about, talk about snake bitten team. That's yeah, it. God. They need to talk to the trainer. That's all I can say. Like, what are you doing to that poor guy? Those poor guys. I don't know. What uh, you doing for at this point? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Anyway. Well, for uh, Mike, myself, JP, Dab Scout, please send us some more notes. Send us any mail you might have. Please don't ask me about Evan Carter. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.